Welcome back to another summer episode of The Code Wolf. Today we're going to explore the big new changes to the OpenAI SDK for .NET. This update essentially splits the OpenAI SDK into two packages, depending on whether you're trying to connect to OpenAI or Azure OpenAI. I decided to make this video because I think some of the other content out there is way over complicating this topic. So let's just jump right in and break this down as simple as possible. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel for more AI, cloud, and coding content. Your support really helps out a lot. A couple real quick slides just for essential context. There are two main ways to access the powerful open AI models like GPT-4 and DALI. One is to go directly through the open AI company itself using their APIs and user accounts and so on. The other option is to use Azure OpenAI through Microsoft's special partnership with the OpenAI company. The Azure route offers additional features, such as the use of Microsoft Entra ID for authentication and authorization, resource management through the Azure ecosystem, and other Azure-related benefits. Now, before June 6th, 2024 or so, we had one official .NET package directly from Microsoft to connect to both OpenAI and Azure OpenAI called azure.ai.openai. There was no official SDK available from the OpenAI company itself, even though there was for JavaScript and Python. Well, the big new change from here on out is that there are now two separate SDKs essentially. We now have an official OpenAI package to connect to their services. This package is maintained through that company's ongoing partnership with Microsoft. The original azure.ai.openai package from Microsoft still exists to connect to Azure OpenAI. However, it now has a dependency on the OpenAI package for shared core functionality and acts as a wrapper to provide Azure specific features like Entra ID. Long story short, if you're using regular OpenAI, use the OpenAI package. If you're using Azure OpenAI, use the azure.ai.openai package, which now has a dependency on the new regular OpenAI official package. Let's further clarify these concepts through a demo. If you go out to the OpenAI website, so not Azure OpenAI, just the regular OpenAI company, and you look at their documentation and resources here, if you go down to the bottom, we have this library section. And up until recently, there was only Python and Node.js. So you can see .NET is now included here. If I really zoom in here, there's .NET and it says that it's in beta. So we now have parity from OpenAI between .NET and these other languages. So they're now officially supporting a package. And to give you a better idea of how this is set up, if we go out to NuGet, we can kind of see how these packages are related. So for a long time now, we've had this azure.ai.openai package. So if you look through here, you can see there's a lot of different versions dating back to early 2023. But there was a big change here with this 2.0 release. So if we were to click on this 1.0 beta 17, and then we go over to dependencies, you can see the only dependencies here are Azure Core and some system libraries. But if we go back over to our versions and we click on version 2.0, so these are the newer releases from June, just 15 days ago here. So we'll click on 2.0 and then go over to dependencies. You can see now there's Azure Core and an open AI dependency. So I have that library open in another tab. And this is the one that's now owned by the open AI company. So you can see it's official over here, open AI. And if we go out to the project website, so if we open this tab, you can see that it's the official GitHub repo from OpenAI, and it's all supported here. Now, some of you might be wondering, well, what about all these older versions? So from 2.0 onwards, these are supported by OpenAI, but what about these older 1.0 versions? What are these? Well, if we click on one of these, so go to 1.11, and then we go out to the project website for these, you can see these actually go out to the okay, go do it, openai.net library. And over here it says, this is an unofficial package. So that's the key difference here is that this new 2.0 version is officially supported by the OpenAI company. They are working in partnership with Microsoft to support this. And this OpenAI package is a dependency 
of this Azure OpenAI package starting with the 2.0 release. So now let's look at some implementation examples of these concepts using some basic coding projects. So I have an OpenAI account here and I have access to a few different models here that we'll connect to from our code. And then I also have a model deployed in Azure OpenAI. These are just GPT-4 models that we'll connect to uh, from our code. So if we go over to Visual Studio, I have this legacy project open. And so if we look at the project file, this is still using that older 1.0 beta package. So this package can connect to both Azure OpenAI and regular OpenAI using this one package. This has no dependencies on that official new package from OpenAI. So the way this worked historically, if you wanted to connect to regular OpenAI, you would just create a new OpenAI client and pass in a specially formatted key and the package would just sort of figure out that you're connecting to that regular service. And we pass in our GPT-4 model and our prompt and so on. And so if we run this and open up our terminal here, you can see we get a basic response back from the AI that it's a language model and so on. So if we comment this out and then we switch to our Azure version down here, so I'll uncomment this, this time we actually do need to specify an endpoint. So Azure has a little bit different setup there and we still provide a key. Uh, you could also use Entra ID to authenticate, but we won't get into that now. And you create an open AI client again with two parameters now instead of one. And this is how the package essentially figures out you're connecting to Azure instead. So if you mouse over this open AI client, it'll even tell you in the constructor notes here, to use OpenAI client with the non-Azure OpenAI endpoint, use a constructor that accepts a non-Azure OpenAI key instead, and so on. So this is a little bit confusing. They're essentially the same clients, but you connect to the different services based on the constructor parameters. But the rest of this is similar. We still just provide a prompt and we'll write out our completion that comes back from the Azure OpenAI service. So I'll run this. If we open this up, you can see the response from Azure, very similar. So we'll close out of here. So the point here is just that, yes, you could connect to both of those services using that same legacy package. Well, now let's go over to this OpenAI demo new project, and let's see how to repeat that same process using the new package setup. So first, let's see how to connect to regular OpenAI again. And right now we have some errors here because this project doesn't have any packages installed. I wanna show you how this works from start to finish and how you would do this in a new project with these updated packages. So the first thing we need to do is install a package. So let's go out to our NuGet package explorer. And in this case, we can just search for OpenAI because we want this official OpenAI package from that company. There's no Azure involved here at all. Now, at the time of this recording, I'm getting an error with beta six, just sort of a generic null reference exception. I'm not sure why, but everything works for me with beta five. So I'm actually going to install that. So I'll accept the message there and that'll pop into our project file over here. And so if we go back into our program file, we can now pull in the OpenAI namespace, and we'll also want the chat namespace as well, so we have our using statements up there. So again, this is connecting to regular OpenAI, still with that special key, and still with an OpenAI client, but now with these new namespaces from that new package. So I'm gonna run this demo again, and if we zoom in here, sure enough, we still get our response back, but we're not using any sort of Azure package or anything like that. It's just the official open AI package connecting to their service. Now, if we want to connect to Azure, let's comment this option out and switch over to our Azure example here. You can see now we get these errors on the Azure objects here because we don't have the Azure package installed. However, other objects like this chat client are pulled from that core open AI library so those still resolve just fine, but we need to install an additional package for our Azure functionality. So if we go back to our browser and we say azure.ai to open AI and click on that, you can see down here, it does list open AI as a dependency and it's beta five actually, which we already have installed. So let's install this Azure package and accept those terms. And now when we go back to our project file, that'll pop in there. But in our program file, we can now resolve these types by pulling in some additional namespaces. So I'll include those. And now we have both of these at the top and all of our code resolves just fine. Now, I do want to mention that if you're just starting out connecting to Azure and you don't care about regular OpenAI, 
you would just install that one Azure OpenAI package and it would bring in the OpenAI package as a dependency for you automatically. You don't have to install them separately like this. But for our demo flow, this works fine. So in this case, we still use an access key to connect to Azure OpenAI, but now we have this new type called Azure OpenAI client, still with the same parameters, but it's a little more clearly differentiated here. Uh, if you remember before in our other project, we had the same type. So these were both OpenAI clients, but now there's dedicated Azure types for things and they use classes from that core OpenAI library when possible. So now if we run the demo and we pull over our console here, you can see response from Azure OpenAI, still just a general introduction from the AI model, but it proves that we are connected. So hopefully this clears up the relationship between those packages and how you would use them. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time right here on the CodeWolf.